Hi guys, this video will explain the effect of tire inflation pressure and vehicle speed on the effective rolling radius. As usual, I prepared the quiz for you. Which of the following tires has bigger change in the effective rolling radius according to the vehicle velocity change? Number one, radial tire. Number two, bias tire. I explained the effective rolling radius in the third video topic on the longitudinal slip, and also I explained that effective rolling radius is affected by various physical factors uh, like tire structure, speed, wear, pressure, temperature, and many more. In this video, I will focus on uh, vehicle speed and inflation uh, pressure in the case of radial tire and the bias tire, respectively. Uh, let's get the hang of the uh, structural differences between a radial and the bias tire first. I hope you understand my hand-drawn picture. Uh, the picture in the left describes the structure of a radial tire. Uh, several belts are wrapping the tire circumferentially and the cord are radially uh, reinforced uh, the tire section in this manner. On the other hand, a bias tire has no circumferential belts and all the cords are biased from a radial direction uh, with some angle theta here. Uh, this structure characteristics enable uh, the radial and the bias tire uh, to have their own intrinsic behaviors. Uh, thanks to their structure characteristics, a radial tire has a big uh, circumferential stiffness and a small radial stiffness. Uh, therefore, radial tire limited the change in the circumferential length, and with this result, uh, there is no big change in the effective rolling radius. On the other hand, bias tire has big a radial stiffness and a small circumferential stiffness. Uh, with this result, a bias tire is flexible in the circumferentially and can allow uh, the easy change in the circumferential length comparing with radial tire. Uh, this graph shows the change of the tire radius versus vertical load uh, from 0 to 6,000 Newton. Uh, in the initial part of loading, a radial tire effective rolling radius decreases with a bigger amount uh, than a bias tire uh, does. Uh, this amount, uh, because a radial tire stiffness is not bigger than that of a bias tire. The beginning part of the loading is governed by the radial stiffness of tire. Uh, but uh, from the time uh, when the load passed 2000 Newton, here, the tire behaviors are governed by a circumferential stiffness at around 4000 Newton, uh, which is corresponding to the average load on the road in the case of the passenger car, uh, there is almost no change in the effective rolling radius in this manner. Uh, moving to the bias tire, uh, in the initial part of loading governed by radial stiffness, the effective rolling radius decreases, but not that much of radial tire, uh, thanks to the steep, uh, steeper radial stiffness uh, than that of a radial tire. Uh, but the effective rolling radius decreases significantly compare, uh, compared with that of a radial tire because the lower circumferential stiffness than that of a radial tire. 
in this area. Uh, the Warren tire has a bigger effective rolling radius here. Uh, comparing with a uh, new one uh, because of lower stiffness, uh, you can find more details on this reference book, Essentials of Vehicle Dynamics, uh, written by uh, Paul Ellison. Uh, this graph shows the amount of effective rolling radius changes for both bias and a radial tire. Radial tire has almost no change in the effective rolling radius over the whole range of vehicle uh, speed uh, because uh, its reinforced belts uh, hold the total circumferential length uh, with their strong stiffness. But bias tire has significant change in the effective rolling radius when the vehicle approaches high speed range because, because of centrifugal force. Uh, you can notice that in the case of bias tire, the effective rolling radius starts to increase from 40 km per hour in the picture. Uh, that means uh, that means uh, the centrifugal force of a tire uh, has a meaningful role above vehicle speed 40 km per hour. Uh, this graph uh, shows the change of the change of the effective rolling radius depending on inflation pressure and the vehicle speed. Uh, blue lines represents uh, the effective rolling radius depending on the various speed with the one fixed inflation pressure, 140 kPa or 260 kPa. Regardless of the given inflation pressure, the change of the effective rolling radius is small, which is approximately 0.3%. On the other hand, red lines represents the effective rolling radius depending on the various inflation pressure uh, with the one fixed vehicle speed uh, 40 km per hour or 120 km uh, per hour. Uh, the increment of the effective rolling radius gets bigger uh, when the speed gets higher and the change of the effective rolling radius is comparatively big uh, which is approximately 0.9%. Uh, uh, this is three times bigger than that of 0.3% uh, percent, uh, of the fixed inflation pressure. pressure. Uh, you can find more details on this reference paper. Uh, the uh, measurement of dynamic radii for passenger car tire. Uh, this picture uh, shows the three-dimensional characteristics of the effective rolling radius. Uh, we have a horizontal plane. Uh, there are two axes. The first one is the velocity axis from 20 km per hour to 120 km per hour. And another axis is pleasure line, pleasure axis uh, from 140 to 260 kilopascal, and we have a radius. We have radius in the vertical axis from 297 millimeters to 302 millimeters. As you can see, a pleasure increase ratio produces a more significant change. Uh, in the effective rolling radius, uh, then the uh, velocity increase ratio does. As you can see, this slope is small, but this uh, slope is quite steeper. The area enclosed in the green lines represents the effective rolling radius of a tire related to its uh, pleasure and vehicle velocity. As you can see, we have uh, a constant velocity uh, line here, uh, 120 km per hour, 
we have this this line and we have uh, uh, this line as 100 and and 10 110 km per hour and also we have 100 km per hour here and also uh, along the uh, pressure axis we have a constant pressure line uh, we have 140 kilopascal line here and 160 kilopascal line here and 180 kilopascal line here and 200 kilopascal line here and so on all the discussions by now eventually boil down to the table above uh, bias tire are sensitive to both uh, the inflation pleasure and the vehicle velocity and the rate of change on the inflation pleasure gives more effect uh, to the effective rolling radius than the rate of change on the vehicle velocity uh, furthermore uh, in the case of radial tire the effective rolling radius changes a little uh, over the various speed range and the inflation pressure range. Now it's time for answer to the quiz. Uh, which tire has a bigger change in the effective rolling radius according to the vehicle velocity change, radial tire or bias tire? The answer is number two, bias tire. I think all of you have hit the right answer. Here we have conclusion in this video. A radial tire has small radial stiffness and a big circumferential stiffness. With this result, radial tire is stiff circumferentially and there is no big change in the effective rolling radius depending on the variation of inflation, inflation pressure, and the vehicle speed. Bias tire has big radial stiffness and the small circumferential stiffness. With this result, bias tire is flexible circumferentially and can allow the easier change in the circumferential length comparing with a radial tire. As a result, a bias tire has a significant change in the effective rolling radius depending on the variation of inflation pressure and vehicle speed. The inflation pressure a uh, changes rate uh, gives more effect uh, to the effective rolling radius uh, than the vehicle velocity change rate. Uh, the effective rolling radius uh, starts to increase from uh, 40 km per hour, uh, making the centrifugal force meaningful. A previous video will help you understand the next video coming soon. In the previous video, I explained the optimal longitudinal front and rear acceleration force distribution together with the constant friction lines. You can also find the explanation of how to obtain the maximum acceleration value using CG location data. Recently, I explained the process to calculate the minimum time uh, from 0 to 100 km per hour for all the drive type, all-wheel drive, front-wheel drive, and the rear-wheel drive. From the next video, I will uh, kick off the ABS topic. I will explain everything about ABS. Uh, the first topic of ABS series uh, will be friction coefficient. Uh, see you at the next video. Goodbye guys.